We did it, Reddit. All right. Woo. Oh. The slide does not work very well. Oop. Cool. Oh, it's nighttime. Wait, did I do all of this in a day? Is that supposed to be the idea? I know why there was so little information about me. August 15th was my first work day at the Gerbera Garden. I had come here for the first time with that group of kids, and the explosion occurred two hours later. How is she finding all this out? Like, she just keeps finding random bits of information. I guess she's just looking through all the logs. Every log ever. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if it's been nighttime here before. Oh man, does that mean. Oh no! What if that means it all takes place in a day and the day's almost over? Wait, this game can't end! There's too. No, there are too many questions left. We're good. Hey, Grill. Did you bring it? I did. Hold on while I replace it. the shiny new one. I wonder if I was supposed to turn her off first. Oops. Well? It's fine. Thoughts still messed up? No. Everything's fine. Then it helped. For now. We'll see if it lasts. How long will your charge last? About two weeks, maybe less. Say, know what I found? The correspondence of that operator, Mark, with one of his colleagues. There are some strange tidbits here. Here, listen to this. To be honest, it doesn't really interest <laughs> me. Wait, this is important. It's about your parents. What? What? Your parents. And me as well. Here, listen. It's a work correspondence. They're talking about research into memory transfer between people using telepathy. Telepathy? That's what it says here. They're discussing telepathy and also mention some kind of side effect. They refer to it as MPR zero, the MPR zero effect. What is it? Well, if my understanding is correct, it's a sensation. A strange sensation experienced when one transmits one's memory. And what of it? Mark writes that at one time he was very interested in the matter, studying MPR Zero thoroughly after that incident with Ida. That incident? We must have been acquainted. Even though I remember nothing about Mark or any unusual effects, and I cannot imagine what incident he's referring to. And what about my parents? Are you my mom? That's here too. He recalls working at a research station before the garden was constructed. There weren't many people around in those days. His circle of contacts was limited to several work colleagues and his Mongolian friends. He writes, It's the family living in a yurt not far from the landing platform. That's your family, isn't it? Sounds like it. Where are your parents now? They died long ago. Why? They could have probably answered many of our questions. Maybe Mark even told them about me. Are you all right? Yes, maybe. Maybe he told them. Uh-oh. 
Ida. She's glitching is again. Everything fine. Everything fine is an ordinary word. Just a note. Like the weather, chilly or warm, but we were looking for other research. Family records, kind letters. So, what was that just now? More of the same? Yes. Again. Ennevish. What? I don't think I have much time. Please help me untangle this web with Mark. I want you to look through your parents' things. They may have left behind notes, journals. Understood. I will go look for them. Tabaha is here. What you want, Tabaha? To burr her. Oh. Wait, why is he floating? Oh, oh, I see. Oh, I see what's going on. I thought he was being held up by these lines. And I was like, what the dick? That's not how you came in last time. Yo, Tabaha, what's good? Looks like it'll rain. Rain? Today? There'll be rain and thunder, and it'll sweep all profiteers into a ditch. What happened? You got any idea how much the search cost me? No. How much? One and a half. Is that a lot? Well... When and by Hungor has the internet ever cost one and a half? I'll pay you back. I won't take money from your destitute self. All right. Thanks. The information was paid for and delivered by a personal courier. Very nice. So, what did you find out? Well, first of all, the Gebera Garden was never about entertainment. It was a hospital, I know. But what happened to it? The kids were all patients, yeah? Well, one of them had his container overflow. The passim exploded. That's what happened. That's all? Hold your horses. The story ain't so simple. Think. A person gets his body replaced and blows up minutes later. You might ask, how could they not have checked the container? Turns out they did check. And the container was empty. And yet... Fifteen minutes later, it up and explodes. In other words, the capsule filled and overflowed rapidly. Pretty much instantly, in point of fact. There must have been a reason. Must have been, sure. But it wasn't found. All that's known is that there was a mishap with this particular child's transfer. Turns out, he had been talking to himself while in the booth. That was the mishap. As to why he blew up, that part's unclear. When he came outside, all his stats were normal, and he looked calm. You can see it on the video. He was talking to himself? What about, I wonder? Nobody knows. The conversation wasn't saved. What's the video you mentioned? From the security cameras. You can see everything. Here he is, coming out of the booth in an M-body. Here's the sword acceptance ceremony. Here he is. Getting off the stage and heading into the garden. He's walking evenly, takes a seat on the edge of a flower bed, then this part is a bit unclear. What's happening? A child comes up to him as he's sitting, a teeny little thing, walks up and says something to him. Looks like the kid fancies the sword and is asking for it. What sword? A toy, just a shiny toy sword. They were given to the kids as presents after their body replacements. Endure a transfer, get a toy. Okay. Okay. So our hero hands over the sword. He's holding on to the hilt, hand extended. The child is trying to take the sword but can't. Why can't he? Because he's grabbing at the blade, which is holographic. The kiddo's fingers swish right through the air, through the illusion. I see. And then what happens? Then, nothing happens. It's the end of the recording. The explosion is coming up. Here's a grown-up approaching the kids. That's the transfer operator. He walks up to his patient and asks him something. The latter turns around and blows up a second later. And that's it. Doesn't clear up much, I'm afraid. What was his name? Mark. Or who are you asking about? The one who blew up? That was Albert. 
And the other child? The little one? Don't know. He was one of the locals. Not sure how he ended up inside the garden. Me? Was it me? Uh... Have fun with your little mystery now, but I'm off. See you tomorrow? I don't know. It might be three, four days, maybe a week. We'll see. All right, take care now. Don't get caught in the rain. Hold on, Tabaha. I've got one more question. I told you everything I know about this garden. I got nothing else. It's not about the garden. It's about my parents. I wanted to remember something about my parents. Here. Uh... What's this? A key to the drawer of your Grandpa Botchin's bedside table. Oh! Where did you get it? Botchin left it to me. He said that if ever you asked me about your parents, to give you this key. So, that's what I'm doing. And I don't know nothing else. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tabaha. Okay. All right. Maybe that's where my journal is that Ida needs. Look in there. Grab the journal. And then we good. And then we good, girl. Yeah. Flashlight attachment. The inside are several brief notes. The two pages split by the bookmark are dense with text. It's a message for Enabish. Well, well. Now the home of my son is empty. So, fate has decided. I'm not complaining either. Providence knows best. All that's left for me is to pray for them. I'll head out in the morning. It's over 200 miles. Better not forget a gas canister. It'll be dark when I get there. The wake will go on all night, and come morning I'll be gone, leaving everything as it is. Providence has got a plan to be sure, in which my role is a modest one. As for the baby, of course I'll take care of him. Take him with me to Ulaanbaatar. I'm not so easily scared. Well, well. Now, oops. Oh. No use quest guessing now. These parts won't let him go, no doubt about it. Evidently, we're destined to live here. What other option is there? Only abandoning him, and that I will not do. He won't drink milk. He won't eat. What do I feed him? He's growing so fast. Isn't it early for a two-week-old child to walk on his own two feet? Where did he go at night? No use guessing now. Oh. I can't figure out what it is he'd found. Some kind of a device. Three days now he's been playing with it, dragging it through the dust, gnawing at it. I guess he's teething. He stopped growing, hasn't changed in a week. A five-year-old child is walking around the yurt. Keep walking, son. Your appearance doesn't scare me. But how is it you look so much like him? I guess that's not for me to know. Providence has got a plan in which my role is a modest one. My job is to pray. Um, an air shuttle flew by yesterday. It's been a long time since we've seen one. I couldn't make out any people inside. Could it be used as a freight? What a meeting! Praise Providence, you reckless soul. If it weren't for Enabish, you, Tabaha, would still be lying in that flower bed. But it's a solid money-making idea. The passage is free, which is always good. The tires on the scooter won't need replacing. I'm gonna sell it. Um, Enabish, you're reading this letter. If you're reading this letter, that means your curiosity has led you into the past, to your forebears. Your parents' belongings are locked away in chests. I will give you the key with which to open them. But know this. No things will give you any answers until you've asked yourself the right question. Of all the possible paths, only one will lead you to this question. Find the one true path, and may my modest assistance ease your search. Um, you will need a ray of phantom light to illuminate your path, and a wise clue to make the right decision at a crossroads. In this drawer lies a rounded object. Use it to obtain the ray of light. In a book of wisdom, you'll find a clue. Then go to my grave, stand on the largest stone, and take a look around using the ray of light. Look carefully and you will see the spot from which to begin your path. Interesting. Receipt for a scooter tire. Did you find anything? Not yet. 
still looking. Uh, I did though. Okay. I'll be disconnected soon. Hang on. Go to my grave. Wait. There we go. Um, new task added. Read the parable from the book under the altar. Find Botchin's grave, not far from the yurt. Pure white flame burns so brightly, so blindingly, that it pains the eye to be held it. Pure white flame. book under the altar. Pure white flame burns so brightly, so blindingly, it pains the eye to behold it. Out in the field. Oh, is that it? Oh yeah. Grandpa Batchin. Okay. So now I need to use this to look for where to go. Or look for a message, I guess. Sun and the moon. Uh, shoot, what was the oh, shoot, wait. I can't remember if there was something about day versus night. Shoot. Carefully, and you will see a spot from which to begin your path. Right, but okay. Make the right decision at a crossroads. Ah, okay. Doesn't look like it. Okay. But Moon did take me somewhere, so maybe it only takes you somewhere if you chose the right thing. So maybe Moon and then Sun, for whatever reason. Actually, let's see. Does Sun take you somewhere? Yeah, it does. Hmm. 
God, I'm going to get so lost. A clue? Ah, uh, I don't... Let me go look at that thing again. It doesn't help me. It doesn't help me. Oh my goodness. Okay. Sun. I am so confused. Oh, no. Nope, still confused. Still so confused. <laughs> 